Well, it's good to be here tonight. Amen. Well, it's good to be anywhere tonight. You could be pushing up daisies, amen? Yeah, I just thought I'd say that. Got to get these nerves out. I, I wish that y'all were half as nervous as I am, and that'd make me feel a whole lot better, amen? We're going to be in, start out in Galatians chapter 5 tonight. Man, I'm going to tell you something. Last time I got up here to teach, I had one of these lapel mics. I feel like I'm an FBI agent up here now. I'm like, hey, the eagle's landed. Blackbird, this is Raven. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel legit. And if you're French, it's legit. Amen. <laughs> so here we go. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to be in, uh, we're going to start in verse 22. And the last couple of times I've actually taught or preached, it's been starting in uh, the fruits of the Spirit. We talked about uh, the fruit of joy and uh, the fruit of temperance. And uh, tonight, you're just going to have to wait a second and you'll find out what we're going to be on tonight. Amen. So in verse 22, it says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Tonight we're going to talk about that one long word in there, long-suffering. Long-suffering. Well, what is long-suffering? Well, first of all, it is a fruit of the Spirit. And if you want to bear that fruit, you must be born again because it is a fruit of the Spirit. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, you cannot produce that fruit. Amen? Amen. If, it, if it's anything else besides that, it is not real. It's fake. Amen? But long-suffering, what does that mean? Long-suffering means long-tempered. Long-tempered. Amen? I looked that up. I looked that up. That's exactly what it means. Long-tempered. How many in here has a short temper? This guy. Especially when it comes to electronics. I hate them. I hate electronics. But another word that we use that's associated with long-tempered or long-suffering is patience. Patience. Now, how many of you enjoy having a lot of patience? Okay. I like, I like patience, but a lot of times it flees from me. Amen. I, I have a hard time. I'm a little impatient at times. But long-suffering means this. It says it is having patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. How many people in here have somebody all the time jumping up and down on their nerves? Amen. There's always that one guy that thinks that his sole purpose in life is to give you trouble. Amen. Anybody know anybody like that? Well, you know what? I know some people like that. I raised two of them. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to get into that here in a little bit. But patience, the word that goes along with long-suffering, means this, the ability to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Jesus, you're going to have to help me because I have, you know what? When I preach, this ain't no joke. Whenever I get an opportunity to, to teach or preach about two or three weeks before that, it is on. It is on. It's like I struggle with whatever I'm going to preach. I don't know about it, but I start knowing about it about three weeks ahead of time because it is constant. Amen? So I, I've been dealing with some long-suffering issues, okay? I'm just saying, some patient issues, okay? And I'm not a doctor. I mean, patience, you know, the ability to not be annoyed easily. I, sometimes I get annoyed really easily. But if you notice, I'm not the only one that suffers from this. If you drive down the road any period of time on the interstate, especially when you're getting towards Charlotte, I'm telling you right now, driving in Charlotte, I would rather go to the dentist than drive through Charlotte, amen? And I don't really want to go to the dentist. But the thing is, what gets me is you're driving, you're driving the speed, or listen, you can't not drive the speed limit on the interstate. 
you have to drive above the speed limit or you will get run over. That's just a fact. Them big trucks coming down through there, they ain't slowing down for nobody. All right? So you got to be ahead of them. And then you got this jack leg that comes down beside you going 95 miles an hour, and you're already speeding, and he he's thinks he's got to get past everybody, right? And he cuts over in front of you, and he takes off, and when you get to the exit you're getting off of, he's sitting right in front of you. You're thinking, what's the point? Why are you going 95 when you're getting there the same time I'm getting there? Amen. And that's what that wears on you. That wears on you. That's why people have road rage. And that's a, that's a long-suffering issue. Road rage is a long-suffering issue. Amen. Well, my other issue is electronics. And that's a bad thing because I work with electronics. You know, GPSs and tablets and all that. And my brother over here, he knows. He's seen me when I get, I almost have a full-blown come apart. You know what I'm saying? Because my stuff ain't working right. You know, so my, my issue is electronics. And I was, uh, does anybody know where uh, Faith is? The town of Faith. Anybody ever heard of Faith? Well, let me tell you where it's at. It's in the middle of nowhere. All right? If you got Verizon, you will not be saying, can you hear me now? Because it does not work in Faith. Okay? It does not work. Well, I had a job I had to do a while back. And it was supposed to be in Charlotte, okay? So I typed on my cellular device, typed in the address that was on my schedule, and it said, go 70. I thought, well, maybe, just maybe there's an accident on 77 South and the traffic's backed up and it's going to take me around and get me over there because I, th I thought, well, maybe it's on the edge of Concord somewhere over that way. You know, I can get there easier that way. So I drive, 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 and I get down into Faith, and it's saying, you got one mile to go. And I'm like, this is not Charlotte. This is not where I'm supposed to be. So I get my phone out, and I turn around, and I'm, I'm sitting there, and my, my phone has, you know that little circle with the mark through it? That's what it's doing. My GPS wasn't working. My cell service wasn't working. I don't have a map. I don't carry an atlas in my truck, amen? We work off of Google Maps, all right? That's what we work off of. So I'm down there in faith where I'm not supposed to be, all right? I ain't supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be in Charlotte 50 minutes away, the other way. So I, I can't get my, my phone right, and I just come from a job, and, and uh, my tablet, my other problem, is a loner, so it didn't have our email system set up in it. So they needed to email me some points. So I had to log into it with my Google email, my Gmail, right? Well, when I'd done that, it kicked me out of my Android on my cell phone, so I couldn't use nothing on that. I, I'm telling you right now, I, I had my phone out in my hand, screaming. I was sitting on the side of the road, pulled off. I wasn't driving because I didn't know where I was at, Okay. <laughs> Had no idea where I was at except faith. And it ain't the play, it ain't the substance hoped for and the things not seen, okay? That was way away from where I was at. All right. I was in a bad place. A real bad place, okay? So I'm sitting here, I'm trying to get my I didn't I forgot my password, okay? On my Google account. I couldn't get logged back in. I'm sitting there and it sends you a code to your phone. I get the code, I type it in. Wrong code. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I was sitting there on the side of the road in Faith, North Carolina, with my brand new 5G cell phone with zero service, no maps, late for a job. I've got customers waiting on me. I was supposed to be in there at 2 o'clock. And I said, I got fed up with it, man. One more time. I'm going to try this thing one more time. Wrong password. I was like, ah! I almost smashed that phone on that steering wheel, man. I was so mad on three separate occasions, okay? So long-suffering is an issue that we have to learn. It's the fruit of the Spirit, and we have to bear that fruit. And the way we do that is we have to walk with the Lord, amen? amen. So finally, finally, I called back to the shop. I'm, I had service, enough service to call, and my son... Boone, y'all know Boone? He's our project manager, right? So he answered the phone. I said, 
You got to tell me where I'm at. I don't know how to get to, I'm, I'm in faith. He's like, what are you doing in faith? You're supposed to be in Charlotte. I said, I know, but T-Sheets took me to faith. I need to know where I'm at. He's like, what road are you near? I'm like, I'm on 152, or 52. I'm on 52. He's like, I'm at, I'm at the intersection of 52 and whatever that other road was in faith. And he's like, oh, okay. So I hear Tony, another guy in our office, he's like, tell him he's got to keep going. He's got to go hit 85 and then go to 485 and then he'll get down there. And I'm like, I'm like, what? So I type that in my phone and my GPS, right? My GPS, you know how it shows you your location? Okay, I'm way over here on the location and the map starts way over here. So I'm driving down the road looking at this little Google map trying to figure out the roads to get to to get to where I can start and go. <laughs> and I'm thinking on the way there, if these customers smart off to me one time, they can do this job themselves. <laughs> I mean, I was all to pieces, man. I, I was about to tear up a $1,000 telephone three different times in about five minutes because I, I hate electronics. I swear I hate them. Technology is great when it works. Get you an atlas and leave it in your truck. <laughs> That'll save you a lot of trouble. Amen. But we get annoyed and we get anxious very easily. And a lot of the reason is because we're born again. We have the ability to, to produce that fruit of long suffering. But we don't walk with the Lord like we should. Or we, or we haven't started our day out right. Or we've got sideways with somebody and we need to get something right. I mean, it just, every, listen, it's just one thing after another that collides and causes the issue, and we're not prepared for it, amen? So how do we become more patient? How do we become more patient? So I'm going to ask you this. What do you want first, the good news or the bad news? Well, the bad news is there ain't no good news in this situation, okay? <laughs> Tribulation. Tribulation, all right? I'm going to read you a verse here in Romans. I'm going to flip over to Romans right quick in chapter uh, number 5. I'm going to read you four verses right there. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. So guess what? If you want to be more patient, you got to go through more trouble. You have to go through more trouble to be more patient. I should be a very patient person human being, amen, because I have been through some stuff, amen, but <laughs> here's the thing, when, when we allow ourselves to get sidetracked and we, listen, we're supposed to be looking to Jesus, right, and we know that he's able that if he brings us to a situation, that he's able to get us through it. Right. I believe that. Yes, sir. I believe that because you know why? I still got my Android in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. It's still in my pocket and it works. Amen. But if you look at that, it says tribulation worketh patience. Worketh. That word worketh means to exercise or to work out. To exercise or to work out. All right. So whenever we get in a situation to where we're in a hardship, we're in a hardship. So tribulation, what is tribulation? Well, it's adversity. It's trials. It's persecution. It's an event that makes you uncomfortable. That's what tribulation is, okay? I'm not talking about the great tribulation, the end times thing. I'm talking about daily stuff, the things that you face daily that give you a fit, amen? Amen. 
Those things, when you are doing exactly what you're supposed to do and those things come, those are the things that works your patience. It works your patience. Okay, so now that we know that tribulation is what causes us to have good patience or great patience. Listen, great patience comes with great practice. Amen. If you want to have the patience of Job, okay, the Bible mentions those patience. And matter of fact, I just started reading in Job uh, for my, my stuff. I'm going to tell you something. He went through the ringer, but he never lost his integrity. Amen. Not one time, even though everything, everything that he'd done and that happened to him, he never lost his integrity. His wife said, uh, won't you just curse God and die? He's like, you sound like a foolish one, one of them foolish women. You know what I'm saying? He's like, are you kidding me? God's been way too good for me to give up on him now. Amen? So that's the things that cause us uh, to have patience, that working, that working out, that exercising. Hey, when you was growing up, did you ever get in trouble and, and your mama say, boy, you're trying my patience. You're getting on my last nerve. My patience is about to run out with you. Well, you know what? You was helping her grow patience. Amen? You was helping her grow some patience, amen? It might not end up too good for you, but it helped her out a lot, amen? So how to deal with tribulation? How do we deal with tribulation? First, the first thing that we need to do as born-again Christians to deal with tribulation is to expect it. Expect tribulation. Because if you're not, ha if, if, if you're not being... Uh, if you're not being persecuted or if you're not being tempted or if you're not having situations come your way and, man, you're just drifting along, man, and you're just fine and ain't nobody bothering you, I'm going to be something. I'll tell you right now, I think I'd be checking up on some things. Because when I got saved, when I got born again, things, I'm going to tell you something, the heat got turned on. I started that new nature, man, and that old nature was a conflict, a constant conflict. Constant. And it's the same way today. It don't change. If you're not battling and you're not struggling with a conflict, if there's not a battle raging inside of you, part of you want to do what's right, and the other half's like, do whatever you want to do. If, that, if that's not a struggle, then you're dead. You're dead. You will struggle if you are born again. He never said, Jesus never said it was going to be easy, but he said, my grace is sufficient. Amen. So the first thing we need to do is expect it. Let's turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, 2 Tim Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. It says this, now Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. So do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs was also. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, listen, here in the United States, now, we don't suffer persecution like they do in Africa or, or South America or any of those closed countries. We don't suffer that kind of persecution. But there, you have suffered some persecution. It may have come from a coworker. It may have come from a family member. It may have come from somebody that professes, professes Christ. Amen? But you have suffered some persecution. What are some examples of that? When I first got, born, when I first got saved on July 11, 1999, at the Freedom Baptist Church in Hidden Out, North Carolina, that was my weekend off. The very next morning, I had to go to work. And uh, I went to work. And we was doing shift change, and one of my 
guys I worked with was there, and I said, man, you ain't going to believe what happened to me yesterday. He's like, what happened to you? I said, man, I got born again. I got saved. And he looked at me, and he's like, what? I said, I got saved yesterday. I trusted Jesus as my Savior. He said, it won't last. Persecution right there. First day. Ain't even born, been born again 24 hours yet. Persecution. Amen? Amen. It's, it happens. You family members. Yo, y'all, why, why y'all go to church all the time? Ain't Sunday morning good enough? Why, why, y'all, why y'all a bunch of Bible thumpers? Y'all a bunch of Bible thumpers? Y'all, y'all want to talk about the Bible. What about this? What about that? You, you mean you don't let your kids watch TV? You mean, you mean you don't let them listen to rock and roll music? You mean you don't let them go to the, the arcades and hang out with their buddies on Saturday night till 3 o'clock in the morning? No. No, we don't. Y'all a bunch of fanatics. Bunch of nuts. Well, bless God, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right bolt, amen? I am on, Jesus is the bolt that I'm hooked to, amen? And you're going to suffer some persecution no matter what. Look, we ain't getting our heads chopped off yet, okay? But if you live godly, if you live for Jesus and you try to, to preach Jesus and witness to people and get people saved, you are going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. It, it may, it, there's persecution on different levels, okay? But when somebody calls you a Bible thumper, that's persecution. I could care less. You know, that's, that's negligible persecution right there. I'm like, amen. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You're right. So there is persecution. You have to expect that there will be persecution. Now, if you expect tribulation, you'll be prepared for it. If we go every day, look, it's coming. It's like a football team, right? They practice an all week because they got a big game on Friday night, right? Friday night lights. Amen. High school football. We're caring about the rest of that stuff. We're talking about high school football, all right? Friday nights, all week long, they're in preparation for a battle that they know is coming. They're expecting it. They're expecting that battle to take place on that football field field. But you think they're going to be ready for it? Yep. That's the same thing with us. If you're going to live godly in Christ Jesus, you better be ready to suffer some persecution. Expect it because it's coming. You may not have have, uh, thought that you've been persecuted or you may not have thought that, you know, it's, hey, listen, this is the United States. We have freedom of speech. We have the Second Amendment. We have the right to assemble. We have all these rights, but it's one stroke of the pen, and it could be gone. And you're either going to conform, or you're going to fight. You have to expect it. You have to expect tribulation. And like I said, it comes in many forms. It It could be from the devil. You know what I'm saying? It could be from your fellow, your family, or whoever. Whoever. We have to expect it. Trials and tribulations are coming, ready or not. Just like playing hide and seek, ready or not. Here I come. That's the same thing with tribulations. You have to be ready for it. Expect it. That's the first thing. We have to expect it. The second thing we have to do is embrace it. Embrace tribulation. Amen. Let's turn to Acts chapter 16. I'm going to give you a prime example of two fellows that embraced their tribulation. 16. I'm going to read down through verse 25, okay? And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met masters much gained by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, the way of salvation. And she did this many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, 
Christ to come out of her, and he came out the same hour. Now, now listen, I ain't preaching on this, but that woman, she had the right message. The right message, but she had the wrong spirit. She had the wrong spirit because she said, these are the men that are preaching us the way of salvation. But she had the wrong spirit about it. And I'm afraid that's the way our churches are nowadays. I'm afraid that we have people up here proclaiming the truth, but they're doing it with the wrong spirit. Amen. So we're not preaching on that, but I thought I'd just throw in that little nugget there in case some of you preachers want to snatch that up and work with it a little bit. All right. Verse 19, and when her master saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. I want you to pay close attention to verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Amen. Now listen. They were being persecuted. They were going down the road, going to pray, and then this lady with a spirit came up behind them and started messing with them. They didn't start it. They didn't provoke this whole ordeal. They were just going on about their daily business and what they'd done every day. And this lady comes up. These are the men of the, of the priest of the Most High God, and they're preaching salvation. And Paul said, get out of that woman. Get out. Guess what? He gone. And her master's like, wait a minute. There goes my livelihood. So they bring him for the master. They strip him down. They beat him and throw him in prison and lock them lock up, chain them up by their feet. And at midnight, they're sitting in there singing praises to the Lord. You know what they're doing? They're embracing. They're embracing their tribulation. They're embracing it. But you know why? Because they know that God is able to get them out of that situation. Amen. They know it. And if you read on farther down through there, man, after that, a little while later, I'll tell you this. When God, when God sees you uh, embracing your tribulation, it gets his attention. It gets his attention. And then guess what? A few, a few seconds later it says, and then suddenly... There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Immediately. As soon as they embraced their situation, God saw it. He honored that. And what did he do? Cut them loose. He cut everybody loose. Not just them, everybody. Amen. So we have to embrace we have to embrace that tribulation and that persecution. Now, when, is the, when in the military, they have a... Uh, now, don't get sideways with me when I say this, okay? Because it's not, it's not derogatory. When you're in the military, you say, hey, boys, it's time to embrace the suck. It's time to embrace the suck because you're going to be in situations and you're going to be in places and you're going to be doing things that you do not want to do but there ain't no way out of them, and you have to do it. So what do you have to do? You have to embrace it. You have to continue to get the mission done at all costs, and when you're finished with that and your perseverance, you're going to carry through. And it, it says right here, embracing the suck means this. The situation is bad. Deal with it. It means to consciously accept and appreciate something that is extremely unpleasant and unavoidable. Anything that makes you uncomf uncomfortable is the suck. <laughs> it sucks. It does. It's not good. It is not good at all. 
If it gets you out of your comfort zone, then it's a tribulation. And you know what you have to do? You just have to pull up, pull up, gird yourself up, and you just got to continue. You got to continue doing what you have to do to get past it. Amen? I was chopping briars one day. I love briars. I love them. Said nobody ever. Amen? When I get to heaven, I'm going to smack Adam in the mouth. That's part of the curse, man. Briars. Briars. I know you my great, 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 great grandpa, but you're getting smacked in the mouth. I was over here in Harmony cutting briars one day. I was surveying, but I was cutting briars. And I got sideways, man. I'm like, this is stupid. Why am I even here doing this? I'm sitting here chopping briars 10 feet tall, and when you chop them, the more you chop them, they fall down on you, and they scratch in your face. I look like I got in a fight with a wildcat when I got done from there. And I sit there, and I chop for about 20 minutes, and I was like, man, you, man, this is stupid. I should have somebody out here helping me. I wish they didn't in an office to get out here and chop some of these briars. They'd know what to do. They'd know about it. And then I said, you know what? You're stupid. You are stupid. You sound like a little baby out here whining about chopping briars. And you know what? After that, I chopped briars and I was done. I embraced it until I got to that yellow jacket nest. And then I left. <laughs> then I left. I embraced it until I got to the yellow jacket's nest. And then I kind of went out and went around it. And I said, somebody else is going to have to chop that lane right there. I'm going around. Amen. But when we get in trials and adversity, we got to dig in. Embrace it. To accept, accept it. Accept it with enthusiasm. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of it. Tribulation gives you experience that gives you more long-suffering, and patience. Amen? So the third thing in our is we have to endure it. We have to endure it. You have to expect it, and when it comes, you have to embrace it, and then once you embrace it, you have to hang on for the ride. It ain't going to last forever. It ain't going to last forever. All right? Second Timothy 2.3, let's turn back over there. Three. Right there you are. Four. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. What's hardness? Something that's hard. A hard spot. Tribulation. Persecution. Oppression. You know, satanic attacks. Endure hardness. To endure means to suffer. But it not only means to suffer, it means to last or to persevere. Endure hardness. Persevere. Push through. Endure. Endurance. These guys that run these marathons, man, that blows my mind. 26.2 miles in like two and a half hours. I can't even ride a bicycle that far in two hours. Them dudes is hoofing it. But they're enduring it. They're persevering. You think it's easy? They're going to get about halfway, and they're going to get runner's lag. They're going to start cramping. Their ribs is going to start feeling like they're about to break. Their, their shin bones is hurting. Their feet are numb. They're numb all the way up to their shin bones. Their lungs, they're, they're, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I don't even know why they do it. It's stupid to me. But they do it. They do it. Talking about thrill issues, but that's that's what we have to do. Whenever we get into that situation, we have to endure it, embrace it, and carry through. When you're on a mission, when you're on a mission, you just can't stop in the middle of it because you're tired. I mean, these guys in combat, these guys in combat. Man, they're out in the desert or out in the jungle or somewhere. You just can't stop and go to sleep because you're tired. I mean, somebody's got to watch. Somebody's got to watch. Somebody has to be vigilant. Somebody has to be looking out for the enemy. Somebody, you got to go. You, got, you cannot quit. No quitting. You have to endure. 
And the reason, and the reason that we're able to endure is because we have hope. We have hope. We have something to look forward to at the end of it all. You know, even if we don't make it through it, if something happens and we don't finish the way we want to finish, but we finish, we have hope. Listen, man. This body might die, but we're going to live forever. It says over in Job, Job says this right here. I love, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You need to read this year. This is what Job says in Job 19, and starting in verse 23. He says this, and I, I was reading this today. He says, oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. He got his wish. Forever, oh Lord. Forever, oh Lord. He got his wish. Amen. He says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy in this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job had hope. He believed in the resurrection. Amen. He believed that even though this body, even though the trials and the tribulations that he was going through, if he died and this body decayed away and became worm food, he said, one day I will stand in his presence in my body. In my body. This body, glorified body, and I will stand in his presence. Job knew how to, knew how to endure. It was Job, amen? And then I like this right here. I like this right here in Job 23, 10. It says, Job's saying this, talking to his friends. Man, I'm going to tell you something. He, hey, with well, friends like his, who's, who needs enemies? Uh, uh, amen. I was reading that, and I'm like, dude, you, you guys, y'all are something else. Y'all need smacked in the mouth. Anyway, Job said this in verse 23, or chapter 23 and verse 10. He says, but he, God, knoweth the way I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. That's why we endure, because we have hope. And when we expect it and we embrace it, and we endure it, it makes us better. It makes us better always. Amen. One day, all of our troubles and trials and tribulations are going to vanish away, and we're going to see Jesus. Amen. Hope. Hope. That's what we get out of all of it is hope. So we need to expect with patience, embrace for experience, and to endure with hope. Amen? That's how we deal with tribulation. That's how you deal with tribulation. Don't wall around and lay around and mully grub around and say, woe is me. Why have I got this so bad? When there's probably somebody else who's got it way worse than you do. Right. Amen? They're going through a whole lot harder trial than you are, and they're doing just fine because they're hugging up next to Jesus. And they're, and they're, listen, they're embracing it and they're enduring because they know at the end of the, end of the road, no matter what, the Lord's going to be there for them. If he'll bring you to it, he'll bring you through it. Amen? Amen. I appreciate you listening to me tonight. Brother, you want to come do an invitation? Let's all stand. Let's all stand tonight with our heads bowed and our eyes closed just for a moment or so. His pianist is making his way over here to the piano. Maybe, maybe God spoke to your heart and challenged you. Or, uh, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I know I got what I needed tonight. You know, and, and the verse that came to mind, to my mind, and it's been, it's been my life verse, I guess, now for a while.
Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing where we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay every, every let's lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. And hang on to this last part. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. But I'm glad the Bible didn't stop there. Verse number two, looking unto Jesus. We have a hope tonight. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the struggles and the trials that you're facing. I don't know how God is building your long suffering tonight. But no doubt each one of us are going through something. And as we go through those trials and as we go through those temptations and as we go through all that, we have hope and we have hope that we can look to. And his name is Jesus. Terry said it right. If he, he won't take us to it, if he's not going to bring us through it. And he's the one who can take a test and turn it into a testimony. Maybe tonight we're just going to pause for just a moment or so. The invitation's open. If you need to do business with God, make your way down. Don't, don't hinder the Holy Spirit if he's tugging on your heart. Amen. If you just need somebody to pray with you, grab the person right next to you. I guarantee you they will go with you and they will pray with you. They will intercede on your behalf unto a God who loves you and a God who wants to help you through that trial through that temptation, through those struggles. Coming to an altar, when, when, when a message like this is preached, I, I, I think sometimes we're scared to move because we don't want people to see that we're struggling, that we're going through that temptation, that we're going through trials. Listen, God already knows everything. God already knows our hearts. God already knows what we're going through. But there's something about just bringing it to him and asking him to help and intervene, bring us through, give us the strength when we can't stand on our own. I'm so thankful that we can trust Jesus for every situation, for every trial, for everything that life throws our way. We can trust Jesus tonight just another moment or so as people are getting the help that they need. Maybe you need to make that move tonight. If you're watching by way of live stream, there's a number that you can call on the bottom of that screen. And we have folk that are standing by the phones right now and they're ready to answer, be able to help you, be able to pray with you, be able to encourage you and point you to the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Is, is our Wednesday night crowd and I don't know the hearts I don't know each one of your hearts but God does but you're unsure of your salvation maybe you've never experienced those fruits of the spirit because you don't have the right kind of spirit maybe tonight God is poking you and prodding you to draw nigh unto his son and believe on him Jesus Christ as your personal savior tonight. I don't know the needs tonight, but God does. He knows our hearts. But are you willing to let go and let God move? Just another moment or so. We'll sing here in just a minute. The time is not late. We're right on time tonight. this way. Let's sing this chorus a time or two tonight. I can trust Jesus. How many of you are thankful that you can trust Jesus tonight? Oh, yes. You can trust him tonight. You can trust him tomorrow when you go to work too. Amen. You can trust him on your drive to work, especially if you go through Charlotte. Amen. Let's sing this a time or two. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. 
thankful that we can trust him. Amen. He does take care of us. Amen. He loves us. Unstoppable. Amen. Listen, let's go out tonight on the suffering. Amen. Through our trial. Uh, we said it the other night, where you have people, you'll have problems. Amen. Where you got people, you're going to have problems. Amen. But it's all right because God for bad and turn it around for good. Amen. So let's love on one another. Let's encourage one another. Amen. Uh, message somebody this week. Encourage somebody this week. Uh, I think about two or three people. And for you. Love you. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. If the Lord in heaven. Amen. Listen, let's be, uh, let's dis be dismissed in a good word of prayer. Shake some hands as you make your way out. Fellowship for a little bit. Amen. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you, Lord. Lord, for another great, great evening, Lord, here at Calvary Baptist Church. Lord, I thank you for these people, Lord, who, who came in, Lord, no doubt weary and tired. But God, we thank you, Lord, for the message that was brought. Lord, we thank you for Brother Terry, Lord, who studied and and God has delivered unto us your precious word. Lord, now let us take your word, Lord, with us. God, may we take it. May we share it with somebody as we make our way into work or our school or, Lord, whatever the case may be, just in passing by. And, Lord, may we just be more long. And Lord, through our trials and through our temptations and Lord, through all the issues of life that are going to be thrown at us. And then may we embrace them. I love that point. May we embrace them. looking unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. God, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the time we had together. Lord, dismiss us now with your blessings. God, watch over us as we all go home, Lord, through the back roads or the highways, however it is that we're going to go. Lord, watch over us. Bring us back excited for Sunday, Lord, unless you, unless you come. And then, Lord, we'll meet you in glory. And, Lord, what a wonderful service we'll have there for all of eternity. We love you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.